You are now listening to About That Business, hosted by Rom Wills. Rom Wills is an entrepreneur and personal coach who has helped people reach their fullest potential personally and professionally. Take it away, Rom. Welcome to Rom Wills About That Business, the importance of sales goals. Now, I'm going to tell you what. I don't care if you're dealing with a product, you're dealing with a service. Every single month, you should have some type of sales goal. And I, I know I've discussed this before, but this is an important thing. This is an important thing. You need to figure out, like, first of all, you need to figure out how much money it takes to run your business. Like, you know, rent, rental equipment, whatever you need, pay for supplies, right? You write that number down. And then you want to be able to live off your business, so you figure out your bills, right? Boom. That's the next thing. So say at this point you're at $5,000, right? And then, you you know, you might want to go see the Avengers movie or something like that or take a nice young lady out, you know, buy some nice things and stuff, right? So, you know, you figure about another 1000 just to cover stuff and then... You know, you might want some emergency money. So say you want 7000 a month, right? So that's what you need. And so what your sales goals need to do is be able to cover stuff, right? Now, here's the importance of actually setting the goal, though, right? Here's the importance. You, this is actually a little trick you're putting on your subconscious. Whenever you set a sales goal... You will put yourself in a mindset mindset where you can possibly make that goal. I'll give you an example, right? Uh, the first month I did sales at a gym, I had a sales goal. I came in, I remember the last day I was 13 uh, sales short of my goal. 13 sales short. And, you know, I wanted to make a great impression. So I got on the phone and I was giving... Much to the consternation of my manager, <laughs> I was making some deals. <laughs> I was making some deals. I was getting people, I was getting whole offices in. By the end of the day, I did 16 sales. Only needed 13, but I did 16, right? And I kind of learned that from the previous sales manager because that dude would have me call and say, yeah, you got anybody? I actually got a couple people for him. And he, he you know, he hooked me up. He gave me, gave me a cut of his commission, right? But I learned then once you set the goal, like don't don't go into a business thinking, oh, I'll just make what I make. Have a specific goal in mind because then that'll keep you going. And like if you fall short of that goal, right, if you were to fall short or you see, OK, I'm, I'm going to fall short of that goal. Let me do something extra. Right. Let me do something extra like. um with my sales goal, that's when you might see for me, for people who follow all of my work, that's when I might, I might do that hot video. <laughs> that video, I'm sure, will get irritate people enough for them to watch it. Or that's when I might come up on uh, like uh, my Vimeo channel with a pay-on-demand video that I know people would be interested in. Or where I might think of, all right, this is the goal I'm setting. I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to make it with how I'm doing things. So you might think, okay, let me switch up. Let me get a product, something. Let me do some hustling. Let me uh, go to this festival right here and pass out some cards. You tend to hustle more. When you have a goal, when you set a goal and you put yourself in a mindset of making that goal, things open up for you because you start tapping into your subconscious and start figuring out, okay, this is what I need to do to get that goal. You know, you'll make that extra phone call. You know, you'll give out that, you'll keep cards on you, right? You might even talk to your client and say, hey, you know what, why don't you, you know, if you feel like I've done a great job for you, recommend me to some of your friends, you know? You'll start figuring, whatever the business is, you'll figure out a way. If you focus on that goal, and it's a competitive thing. Now, you got to, it's important that you focus on making the goal. Because if you just like la di da oh, I'd like to make 8000 this month. Or well, I like to make 15, depending on what you win. You ain't going to do it. You ain't going to do it because you're not focused on it. You just like whatever. And usually people who like whatever eventually go out of business because they ain't making a steady amount. They're not doing the extra step. 
Like if you have a restaurant, right? And you thinking, all right, I need to make, I don't even know what restaurants make. I'm a bit, uh, actually, I do have some experience with that business, I thought. Like, yeah, when I was 10 years old, but that's, that, trust me, that's another story. Um, you know, you start thinking, all right, say, all right, I'm, I'm going to use a conservative figure because I'm not in a restaurant business, so I don't know how much one could make it all day. I would think a lot. But I'll say, let's say it's a takeout or something, right? Small takeout, right? You're making 2000 a day, right? All right, so that's in a week, that's 14000 right? But, and that's your goal. But then you're not really focused on a goal. You're not, you're not focused on it. So you like la di da and all that. And you fall way short of that goal. You can't figure out why, right? But then, okay, let's go over to the parallel universe where you take that goal seriously, right? All of a sudden, you're doing a little bit extra to get that goal, you, to get that 14000 for the week. You're doing the extra. Like, that customer service is extra, right? You might even do some extra. You might be like, you know, somebody orders something. You say, hey, why don't you try this pie right here? It's on the house, right? People like it. It's like, oh, man, this joint is good. Hold up. You be licking their fingers and whatnot, all right? But then when they come in again, Right? They come in and say, hey, let me order this pie. Or you might even say at that pie, say, hey, you know, we selling these pies. Right? And say, oh, shoot, get, let me get two of these. And that was just something because you wanted to make that sales go. You say, okay, hold up, let me do something. You might tell your people, your sales associate, right, your uh, service and stuff, hey, look, be a little bit extra friendly. Right? Now, for the scuzzy, for the scuzzy, like, you know, a breast and run example, you might say, hey, wear that tighter sweater today. <laughs> Smile a little bit more. Get that extra tip. You know, order them. Get them friendly. You know, in fact, a lot of restaurants, they always recommend something extra. They always recommend. Somebody good can get you to do it. Because they always do. If you think about it, right? If you think about it, they always like, hey, you want any dessert with that? Oh, you know what? I recommend this with it. They always trying to do an add on, right? In fact, that's something they do in retail. As y'all know, I've worked retail. They'll do something, or at least used to. Huh? A smart store do it. Like if you come in there and say you just want a shirt, right? So, you know, the smart person say, hey, you know what? You got to get these pants with it. The belt got to match the pants. You got to get some socks. Shit, you even want to get some underwear to match it. Boom. You're figuring out ways to increase that bottom line, right? Because you start getting creative. You start hustling more, right? You know, using the restaurant example again, you give extra great service. Like, a really good server in a restaurant can make a lot of money just through tips. That's why, in fact, that's why they keep the regular salary in a restaurant. Like, they can get away with not paying a minimum wage in places where they serve because of the tips, like somebody really good can get big tips, right? But when you set that goal, boom. In fact, you can even say, Dave, say you are serving a restaurant because you can use it for anything, whether you work for yourself or not. Let me use the serving that restaurant thing. I was looking at that, right? Especially since, okay, if I'm eating with my sons, the tip is typically always going to be over $10. Always if I'm eating with my sons, right? And... Always going to be, and somebody think about it, if you got, if you're serving like, say, six tables or something, and you got good-sized parties at them, that's $60 an hour, right? If you, and as a server, just thinking, you know what, this is how much I want to make a, a week. Like, a really good server <laughs> can make a lot of money. Now, I'm not sure how that's taxed or how they work that. I haven't worked in an industry, but I know how much I'm putting down. Right, and so somebody can make a lot of money per hour, you know. Hence, why they keep those things like small, right? A really good server could like really do it. So, you know, setting that goal tells your body, tells your subconscious, your very being to go that extra mile to actually make that goal. You'll find the strength and energy, but you got to be committed to that goal. And I've actually done that with. Uh, my overall business now, above my computer, I have a certain number I got to make. And I started at the beginning of the year, and I actually made that number by March. And we'll make it again in April. 
we'll make it again in April. In fact, I actually set the number higher. I mean, my base is the number, but I actually put it at $500 higher. And the money's just flowing in because all of a sudden I'm like, boom, right? So that's why you want to set sales goals. Very important. Very important. So anyway, y'all know what it is. Let's go make that money.